the Keystone is one of the only completely air-gapped hardware wallets out there. It's feature-rich and comes with everything you need to store and interact with Bitcoin securely. My name's Darren. I help the everyday man use Bitcoin. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the Keystone wallet. We're going to cover what the Keystone is, what you need to get started, setting it up, receiving Bitcoin, sending Bitcoin. Along the way, show you the features it has, where it fits in the market, and if it's a product you should consider storing your wealth in. Before we get to the video, got a sponsor from MrSatoshi.com. They make premium Bitcoin apparel with clean looks that are not too over the top. They have worldwide free shipping and you can get 15% off your order by using my referral link in the description below. Now disclaimer, I was sent this wallet by Keystone and it's been a few weeks of me using it, testing it before I was comfortable making this video. Never really heard about this wallet before. I have heard about the Kobo in which the Keystone once was, but we'll get into that a little later. Overall, if somebody's sending me a wallet, if I haven't really heard of it, I'm going to be skeptical, but actually very surprised about my research testing that it does have a lot of the top security features that a Bitcoin wallet should have. And there's definitely a product fit for the Keystone and something that you should consider. So the Keystone is a hardware wallet, which means this is a standalone device that is never connected to the internet. It stores your keys on this device in order for you to make a Bitcoin transaction. It's a lot safer than having a wallet on your computer or your phone that is connected to the internet 24 seven for somebody to hack into, install something malicious on there. The only way they could steal your ability to send Bitcoin transactions would be to steal this device. So besides the control of your keys offline, the other thing you should look for in a Bitcoin wallet is open source or verifiable source where you, me, the community, somebody else could look at that source code and go through it and find nothing that's malicious inside of that. You want it to be feature rich, have coin control, choose address types, the ability to update it when security updates might be needed. You want to be able to generate your own keys within the wallet and you want it to be Bitcoin only. All of this above is possible with the Keystone. There are two models of the Keystone, the Keystone and the Keystone Pro. The Keystone Pro has a fingerprint scanner on the back of it. This is a good option if you're worried about being watched when putting in your codes. There's a self-destruct chip on here, so if anyone wants to pry this open or try to get the chip inside to find your private key, it would self-destruct. And there's a rechargeable battery on the Pro option. Now the Keystone is very similar to a Ledger or Trezor. It's able to hold Bitcoin and all these other things. But where it differs is that it's never connected to the internet. So you can use this fully without plugging it into your computer like the Ledger or Trezor. So to get started with the Keystone, all you need is the Keystone, but I do recommend having a memory card in order to update it. Now, when you're unboxing the Keystone, make sure it has not been tampered with in any way when you receive it. The Keystone Pro comes with everything you see here. You got your USB cord, your two battery packs, including the rechargeable one and the AAA battery option. Instructions on how to use it your seed word cards, warranty card, and a coupon code for your next purchase. Now, first thing you're going to need to do is put in the batteries or charge this device. Once it's 100% charged, power button is at the top to turn it on. Next, what you need to do is a security verification. You head over to key st.1 slash start to get started. It'll walk you through all the steps very easily in what I'm showing you right now. Now the security verification is to make sure it was not tampered with from production to delivery to you. You scan this QR code with the keystone and provide the verification number. Everything matches, you're good to set up the device. Once this step's completed, you're gonna need a password. This password allows you to get into the device, so don't forget it. The next option is to update your firmware. This is an additional step, but recommended. It can help with bugs or security that was found by the community. And again, could have happened from the time of manufacturing to now. So for this, you're going to need an SD card. You have two options when downloading the firmware. The first is your normal firmware, that's multi-coin. If that's your jam, choose that. This is what it comes with default out of the box. Second is their Bitcoin only firmware. Now, if you followed me for a long time, you know that I'm not interested in any of these tokens, so I'm gonna be updating to the Bitcoin only firmware. This is because if you're using it with Bitcoin only, there are vulnerabilities that come with using the other coin support. It just expands the ways 
that the keystone could be vulnerable. So if you're just using Bitcoin, this is the better way to go. On this section, you're going to choose the Bitcoin only. When you download it, um, you can unzip the file and there will be an update.zip. This is what you, this is what you copy to your SD card plugged into your computer. Once it's on your SD card, you plug it back into your keystone and it should recognize the file right away and you can complete the update. Once the update is complete, you are ready to make your new wallet. So first you're going to ch choose create a wallet. This will generate your wallet with your 24 word recovery seed phrase. If you're ever to lose this device, gets damaged, open a new wallet somewhere else, this is what you need to save. So make sure nobody's watching you when you write down these words and save these words somewhere safe, offline. They even have seed plates that you can buy that are made out of metal that help protect your seed phrase from fire or water damage. Now, once all your words are written down, they will test you to make sure you've written them down in proper order. This is a lot faster than you think because there's kind of an autofill solution as you start typing. Once you've done this step, your wallet is ready to be set up and receive Bitcoin. This is where you choose a companion app. Again, this device just has your signing key in it. It is not connected to the internet. So we need an app that's a Bitcoin client that can connect to the internet and the Bitcoin network in order to relay the transactions we do on here to the network. So it gives you these options to choose from. The great thing about this hardware wallet is can be used with multiple other apps. This is a sign of a trustworthy device because if their app that they created was ever to go down, you can use it on another app that has been developed. Now I have reviews on Sparrow Wallet and Blue Wallet, but today I'm going to use their own companion app. It's not always the safest to use their app. This can be a privacy risk because you've, you've bought your keystone with them, you've scanned it on their wallet, they've shipped it to you, you then connect it to their app they've developed. Ideally your hardware wallet should not know what app you're using. Now I'm not saying it's going to affect your funds in any way. It's just a possibility that down the road your privacy might not be as good. However, I do think for somebody new, convenience wise, using the app is always the easiest. And it also gives me a good chance to review the app at the same time. To download their app, um, it's available on the App Store or Play Store. And once it's downloaded, it'll bring up the option to bind the app with your Keystone wallet. So it'll display a QR code that you scan and your app is now connected to your keystone. It took the addresses that are associated with your keystone and you're now able to send and receive on the app. You're gonna be doing all of your receiving and sending through there and your final signature to send those transactions will be done with the device. So now it's time to receive some Bitcoin. Receive Bitcoin, we're gonna click on Bitcoin and receive. Now we need to make sure the addresses match both in our wallet app and the keystone itself we're good to go to where we want to send Bitcoin from. In my case, I had some Bitcoin on my blue wallet that I'm going to be sending to my Keystone wallet. Here, I'm just going to choose the fees, the amount I want to send. And you don't need to copy an address at all. You're actually going to be scanning an address with whatever wallet that you're sending from. We now head back to the app where we can see if we've received the Bitcoin or not. Here it has been received and it is currently pending. We now wait till it is fully confirmed on the blockchain and we'll be able to see that within the app. You can see it's been confirmed, there's over six confirmations and this is the amount of Bitcoin or Satoshis that we have in our wallet. From here, you're good to shut off your keystone, you're good to shut off your wallet, you have Bitcoin in your own possession and that's all you need to do. To send Bitcoin, we are going to choose that Bitcoin again and press send. Again, I'm going to be sending it back to my blue wallet. So I'm going to copy my receive address where I want to send it, paste it in there. On this app, you can choose the fees, how fast you want it to be confirmed. Once that's chosen, you're going to press send and it will give you a detailed confirmation of it. Press confirm. This will bring up a QR code that you're going to be scanning with your keystone. You scan this QR code with, QR code with the keystone. So and we're gonna press sign here and put in your password. You then head back to your app. And to fully sign the transaction, you're going to scan the QR code with your app on the Keystone.
now the transaction is fully signed and broadcasted to the network. And we can see that that Bitcoin we had has now been sent off. And now we've both sent and received Bitcoin with the Keystone. So the Keystone is one of many hardware wallet options, but I do think there is a good market fit for this product. It is similar to the Ledger and Trezor based on the ease of use, coins it has. Where it is superior is that it is 100% air gapped. In order to use the Ledger or Trezor, you have to plug it into your computer, and at that time it could be vulnerable to attacks. And in my experience, it's easier to do transactions with this device than a cold card. That is because of the camera that's on the back and the touch screen. You don't have to use a memory card and plug it into your device, plug it into your computer, connect it to your wallet app, plug it back into your device to send transactions. You can just do it all through the camera. Where it falls a little short of something like the cold card, which is considered one of the cream of the crop when it comes to security, is the features like the camera, fingerprint sensor. These are great conveniences, but they are also possible security holes that something like the cold card doesn't even risk. And the integrations with some of the hot wallets of the altcoins and the assets themselves bring unnecessary risk. But there is a way to opt out of that. So you have to ask yourself, is it really the 100% safest way to store my Bitcoin? And trust is a very big thing in this industry. 99% of us can't read open source code, can't reproduce one of these builds. We have to trust the community. We have to trust the reputation of that wallet over time. Something like the cold card or Trezor has gone through a lot of that in Bitcoin. The Keystone is a relatively new brand. Although it was originally the Kobo Vault, it is still trust in the marketplace that they need to build. So from what I heard in Kobo is that the developers of the Kobo Vault and the company had different views on where the company should go. So the developers who made the Kobo Vault bought out all the IP for it and rebranded it to the Keystone. But again, after doing my research and testing, I think it's a great in-between fit between the Trezor and the Cold Card. I don't think you can go wrong with the Keystone. Do your own research. Find out what's the best security setup for you. It's not a perfect answer for everybody. You're still gonna need to learn how to use it properly because if you do it wrong, that's not the device's fault, it's your fault. It's definitely something I would recommend to somebody who is looking for a hardware wallet that is easy to use. You can get the Keystone at this link down below. If you like the wallet, buy it from there. I'll put my coupon code below. So if you have any questions, comments, put them down below. I'll be happy to answer you. I got my Bitcoin guide down there. Don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions, want to know more. And uh, thanks for watching.